Hey everybody, Brie Weisard here from thefeatherbrain.com. I have something to share with you today that I am so excited about, and that is the Camping Tent Chick Brooder. So this is the first year that I've used a camping tent as a brooder, and it has just been incredible. It has been so much better than any other brooder I've ever used, and I just can't imagine ever going back to anything else. So with this brooder, I've had very little cleaning, no smells, and I can just get in there and freely interact with my chicks, which has made them super tame. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna show you about this tent is just the structure of it. This thing's got some really great qualities. So if you take a look at it here, first of all, um, the mesh on this thing allows for really, really good ventilation. So when you get droppings or spilled water in your brooder, it dries out really fast and gases and anything stinky just kind of dissipate and they get out of here. So there's no odor with this kind of brooder. And then if you look down here though, we've got some tent material rather than the mesh. And I love that because it prevents drafts at chick level. So especially when your chicks are young, if they have a draft at chick level, they just can't stay warm and they can actually end up dying like that. So this is a great setup to prevent that sort of thing. And then again, if just looking at this mesh here, there's just so much light that gets into the tent, which is another wonderful thing. And if you have it in a room like this, you can get some natural light coming in from the windows. It's just such a great setup. Lastly, with the structure is the escape proof design. So if you've raised chicks before, you know that they can fly pretty, um, pretty young, pretty well. And so you always end up having to put some kind of a cover on your brooder. With this one, you don't have to because it's just fully enclosed, but it still gives them tons of vertical space. So unlike a tub or a bin or a box, they can still practice their natural behaviors in this kind of coop with vertical space. Okay, let's take a look at the inside. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out um, about the brooder in here is just how much space there is. Um, this is by far the best part about this brooder. But let me come in here for a second. Oh, there's Pippa flying. Now you kind of get what I mean. Okay, baby. There for a minute. Hi, sweetie. Don't fall. Hi, baby. Don't fall. Okay, I'm going to grab you, okay? I'm going to pick you up. Okay, gotcha. There you go. There you go. Okay, can I put you down? All right. Okay, I made it safely inside with Pippa. So now I just uh, want to make a little argument for you about why having so much space is so important for your chicks. And I would even say necessary for their full development. I do have some notes with me first time on camera, so bear with me. So I've already mentioned one thing that I love about the space in here, and that's that it's just so much cleaner. The moisture is really low because the poop is basically spread around in so much bedding that it dries out really quickly. That also means that there's no smell. Um, and one of the best things for me is that I can go a really, really long time without replacing bedding. So in my smaller brooders, there were times I had to replace the bedding every day. And if I wasn't doing it every day, it was every three or four days at most. And that just gets really old and it's really stressful for the chicks because I had to move them out. So this setup is just great. I went three weeks without even messing with the bedding and then I just added some more bedding and there's just so little poop. Also with a small brooder, I found that my chicks were getting poop and bedding kind of stuck on their little feet and toes. And it was just really gross and unclean and I felt sorry for them. And I just am not having that at all in this size of brooder, right? The second reason that chicks really need this much space. And this is something that almost everybody is ignoring, but they shouldn't be. And that's just that chicks do need a lot of space to practice and learn all of their natural behaviors. Um, so just for example, those behaviors include foraging and exploration. That's largely what chickens do all day when they're up and active. And they have a very strong instinct for this. And it appears to bring them great joy as well. 
And in small brooders, chicks don't just don't have a lot of room to really get into that. Perching is another natural behavior that chicks have a really, really strong drive for. And particularly, they need multi-level perching. So not just some little tiny perch in your brooder. That's definitely better than nothing. I do encourage that if you're using a small brooder. But what they really need are different vertical levels that they can jump to. So they can do that on kind of stick or board type perches, how you often think of perches, or they can do that from platforms, um, steps, lots of different things. They just need that different vertical, multi-level jumping and exploration. And that is actually really important for their development. Uh, chicks that get that early exposure to that are actually better at navigating 3D space as adults. And then other natural behaviors that chicks need a lot of space for include flying, dust bathing, food running, frolicking, and sparring, which is actually usually closely tied to frolicking. It usually happens after a frolicking chick collides with another chick. So you can see that in this clip. Pretty cute, right? But that also brings me to another reason you really want to have space in your brooder, and that's to prevent aggression. So like all animals and children, when chicks don't have a lot to do, they can get very cranky with each other. If you have a small brooder, you're not going to have space for, I call them toys, scientists call them enrichment, but all of these different objects you see in here are keeping my chicks occupied and happy, and they're learning how to navigate their world by playing with these toys. You just can't do that in a small brooder. So when you have a brooder this side, you just don't get chicks feather picking or getting aggravated with each other. They just have way too much else to do. And then the second part of that is that if you do have a chick that gets annoyed with another chick, then that first chick really does need a lot of space to get away and give that other chick her space. So um, having lots of space in here, lots of things to go behind, places to hide in, that just makes it so your aggression level is going to be down, 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 and probably at zero. And then I do just want to say one more thing about toys before we move on, and that's just how there is so much science out there right now that has shown how helpful toys are for chick development. So let me just read you a few conclusions from studies, and I'll include a link to the references below. Um, chicks reared with toys have stronger immune systems. They produce higher quality eggs as adults, less aggressive to flock members, cope better during stressful events. Um, they have reduced fear, including well into adulthood after the toys are long gone. They have better spatial skills that, like all of these, carry over into adulthood. Um, they're better able to forage and find food and to perch at multiple levels. And if that's not enough, your chicks get a lot of joy out of playing with new toys too. Okay, and then lastly, there's imprinting. It's very hard to imprint your chicks on you if you don't have a big space to interact with them. If you're not sure what imprinting is, it's a biological process that happens within the first couple of days of a chick's life. Uh, if you wait too long after the first two, maybe three days, then you can't imprint them. They're not capable of it any longer. But if you do imprint them, then you get super tame chicks like I have here. They are always so happy to see me. They climb all over me. I can touch them whenever I want. Um, they spend long hours sleeping on my lap. Uh, if you want that kind of relationship with your chicks, then you really want a camping tent, a camping tent brooder. Huh? See, she likes me. Hey, sweetest. You can just see how tame she is. Yeah, you just relaxing. You little sweet girl. And all of my chicks are like this. And if you've raised chicks before, that's not normal at all. So when is a camping tent brooder not a good idea? Um, the obvious one, oh, there she goes, comes down to space again. If you have a smaller house or just all your rooms are filled with kids or something, uh, the tent does take up a lot of space, so that would be a downside if you don't have the space available for it. Secondly, the camping tent brooder does not provide good protection from pets, especially I'm thinking larger dogs or motivated cats, 
and it also does not provide good protection from rambunctious children. So if you do use this kind of a brooder, you will need to make sure that you have a space that can separate them from any of those potential threats. So for me, I've got it in my office. I keep the doors closed. I don't allow my pets in here. I don't have kids, but if young children were to come visit the house, I would not let them in here at all without very close supervision. Um, and then the last thing, and uh, this should hardly count because all brooders are kind of messy, but when you're in sitting in a brooder with your chicks, every time you step out, you drag some bedding with you. So you do have to just kind of sweep up the area outside a lot, but I don't really, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but if you're a cleaner person than I am, then it might be. So I thought I'd share that too. Hey babies, come here. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Manj. Hi, Manj. <laughs> you are so sweet. You are just so sweet. You are. Okay, so lastly, I want to just give a couple of tips for what kind of tent to buy. Or you might even have one in your garage, and that's really one of the best things about this tent is that... <laughs> Sorry, they're being really goofy over there. Um, one of the best things about this tent is that you can buy super cheap tents. So you're leaving the tent indoors so it doesn't matter if it's low quality. So this is way cheaper than a lot of the puppy pens out there, for example, and it's much bigger. Um, when you're looking for a tent though, you do wanna make sure it has good ventilation. You don't want just a little sliver of mesh at the top. You wanna make sure you've got at least one wall that's got pretty good mesh on it or like this one, which is wonderful with three, and then this if I wanted to. Uh, you just need that for ventilation. And then you wanna make sure you get a decent size. So this tent that I'm using, hi sweetie, is eight feet by eight feet. Um, and I actually bought an even bigger one to start out with that was eight feet by 12 feet. And when I put it in this room, I was just gonna have to move some furniture to get it to fit and so I ended up going with the smaller one but I do regret that and wish I'd gone with the bigger one uh, just because just mostly because um, I have to cycle toys in and out so often and I wish they just had a little bit more space for me to put more toys and more things in there for them to do at once and they're just so active it really is just the more room you can give them the better additionally with the uh, 8 by 12 which was a six person tent it was the cheapest six person tent I could find this is the cheapest four person tent I could find with good ventilation uh, with that tent it had a really I think it was a six foot tall ceiling or something so there was just so much more vertical space I could have worked with as far as toys and things went and just so much more I could do for them but this 8x8 eight eight has been awesome and even a smaller one would be great because even a smaller even say a two person tent that's still going to be a lot bigger than pretty much any other brooder people are using unless unless you're using a heated out building or something. So you could go kind of the cheaper discount route and get a, I don't know, 10 or $15 two person tent, just make sure it's got the ventilation. And really that's, that's really all you have to worry about. So I am gonna link to this tent on Amazon if you're interested. I'll link to the six person one, which is just the equivalent, same brand and everything. Um, I'll link to that one too, and then I'll link to a discount version. And I do just want to shift gears here for just one second. If you will be getting chicks again in the future or you're new to chicks, uh, I do have a quiz on my website called Who Is Your Chicken Soulmate that I developed to help people find chickens who were basically made for them. So they have the personality that you want, they lay the types of eggs you want, they do well in your climate and the amount of space you can give them, that sort of thing. It's a short quiz, it's been taken by thousands of people at this point, and it's quite fun and it's also useful. So if you're interested in figuring out what kind of breeds to get and who your soulmate is in the chicken world, then I will link to that below, so check that out. Uh, otherwise, until next time.